welcome. In this video, we'll discuss the impact of variability and how we can take countermeasures to improve the performance in service and supply chains. Consider the service chain that deals with traffic accidents. We know accidents can happen, but we cannot predict when and where. So we need an ambulance capacity to respond to accidents and bring patients to the emergency room so they can be cared for. Like the first stage, the capacity of subsequent stages is variable, as most capacity is driven by humans, whose availability and productivity is variable. To illustrate the impact of variability, assume for simplicity that each stage's capacity per shift is variable and can be modeled by rolling a die. Notice that this is a balanced serial process, meaning that each stage has identical capacity. On average, 3.5 accidents happen per round. So how many patients do you believe are cured for after 10 rounds? Take a moment, stop the video and think about that. Similar dynamics happen in supply chains, where the number of customer orders per hour varies, as well as the capacity of subsequent stages. Now let's consider what may happen. Depending on the realization of the capacity, two specific things may happen. Let's take a look. The first stage had a capacity of six. However, the subsequent stage only had a capacity of four. Therefore, two units were blocked and only four continue on to the pick and pack. At pick and pack, the same thing happens where two units were blocked so that only two units finally go to home delivery. Unfortunately, while home delivery had a capacity of four, it was starved for two units and the total output was two, while the input was six. This is the shortfall. The shortfall of this process is the difference between the input and the output, which in this case is four. This highlights the two culprits of the impact of variability. Notice variability by itself in one stage is not an issue. However, if there are dependent events in conjunction with the variability, that may lead to either blocking or starvation. Blocking means that the supply of a station exceeds the capacity of that station. Similarly, starvation means that the supplying capacity is less than the demanding capacity. To understand the shortfall, let's consider the simplest serial model. We have n stages that all are balanced, meaning their average capacity equals the mean mu. On top of that, we have some variability. It's uncertain and has magnitude sigma. The realization depends on a coin flip. In that model, it is very simple to find out that the total output of the process is the minimal capacity of the end stages. And because we have these binary events, we can calculate that expected shortfall, which is sigma, and this is important, okay? It shows right away that the shortfall of the process is proportional to the magnitude of variability. The second term shows that there is an exponential impact of the number of stages in the chain. When we have six to seven stages, virtually all output is lost. So what can we do about that? To improve performance, we must reduce the shortfall. And to reduce the shortfall, we can attack the root causes of the problems. And these are twofold. We can work either on reducing random variability, either by reducing the uncertainty or reducing the variability over time. All of this has to do with better information and demand management. To reduce dependency, of course, we can reduce the number of stages. But there's also a variety of other countermeasures we can take in our supply chain design. First one is improving the correlation among the stages. By that I mean synchronizing the capacity of each stage along the service chain. Second thing we can do is decouple the stages by adding buffer inventory. That requires that customers willing to wait in between stages. Third, we can actually work on capacity management. Instead of making the whole line balanced, it actually would be much better to add some safety capacity at a variety of stages and only at the bottleneck reduce the capacity. That way we will mitigate the impact of starvation. And last, we could work on flexibility. For example, if we could share capacity among the stages, we would greatly reduce the shortfall. To illustrate the impact of adding buffers in between the stages, let's consider the die and matchsticks game that was described in the goal 
written by Goldrad. This game is like the service chain that I've explained earlier, with only one difference. Now there are storage buffers in between the two stages. Patients don't die in between rounds, or orders can stay until the next shift, or in this example, matchsticks can remain in the buffer if there is insufficient capacity downstream. If there is sufficient inventory in the buffer, downstream and upstream stages are buffered from each other, meaning decoupled. In that case, we reduce downstream starvation. And if there is no storage space constraint, there will also never be blocking. Therefore, this will greatly improve performance. The question, however, is how much inventory should we have? To answer that question, we can play a simulation. And below, you will see the link of a very simple spreadsheet model that I've played with and that I will show the results. I've simulated this match game process for 50 rounds, and I've done that five times and then I've taken the average. So on this graph here, now you see that as the starting inventory increases, the expected output improves. The second important consequence is that if I use a die with less variability, we expect the throughput to increase, and it does. Two things you could do now. If you reduce variability, you can move up, greatly improving performance. Or if you reduce variability, you can actually get that same performance now with less inventory, both of which are great improvements. So to summarize, we have seen that the combined effect of random variability together with dependent events seriously degrades performance in service and supply chains. We have also seen that to improve performance, we can attack the root causes. So either decrease variability or decrease dependencies. That can be done by reducing the number of stages in your service chain, increasing synchronization among the stages, adding buffer inventory, adding safety capacity at, the, at most stages, or adding flexibility. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you're interested in more content like this, hit the subscribe button and also the little bell. That way you'll get a notification whenever I publish new content like this. Hope to see you again. Thank you.